Morning, everyone. Welcome to the Morning Market Review. Today is Friday. It's the 3rd of February. My name is Russell Shaw, my Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address is rshaw at fxm.com. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the high-risk investment warning, and I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Morning, Matthijs. Nice to have you on the webinar. Very good to have you back. Can you guys see the screen? Can you see me and can you hear me? Just the three yeses. Uh, all right. Good. Excellent. Let's go ahead and bring up the market commentaries disclaimer. And um, I want to just remind everyone we got a live trade today on a live account. And I'm going to just paste uh, the link for that. So uh, if you guys want to join me, it's in the chat. You can go ahead, click on that, and you are certainly most welcome. Our references, market scope, and trading view. Um, just a few interesting things that I'd like to uh, share with you that I was taking a look at this morning. So the first thing is there is obviously this big story that's doing the rounds with um, Alani Group. Um, they have been uh, targeted by Hindenburg, which is a specialist uh, short seller outfit. And uh, they re I think they uh, I think they wrote, uh, subject to correction, I think it's a 98, 98 page report. Uh, this is a dining. You can just see how it's sort of got this waterfall effect. Um, if I go down to the daily chart, uh, you can see um, really how it's capitulated over the last week or so. Uh, there is um, there was a big decline this morning, um, but it fits. And uh, the reason that I think that we need to watch it, it's not a company that I know much about, um, but the idea is um, there is a threat of contagion here. Already Shell's come out and said that they've got exposure to a dining. And um, what tends to happen when there is these big um, corporate events, uh, uh, let's just say corporate price events, is that uh, debt, uh, corporate debt, comes under pressure because if you're a debt holder, you're going to you're going to get nervous, right? To put it mildly, um, and uh, there are a couple of things that you that can happen here. There might be um, some clauses in the in the um, indenture that basically uh, requires some sort of compensation or even a return of money. Uh, there could even be a, a blowout, and I suspect this is what's happening, spreads are starting to, to widen. So spreads would widen for a Adani debt, making it uh, much more expensive to repay the money that's owed. And this can really uh, have a contag contagion type effect. So this is what's happening with um, Adani. Um, it's interesting to see that we are off our lows this morning and markets do have a tendency to overshoot. I, I don't know if that's what's happening here or not. Uh, again, it's, um, I'm not saying um, that at all. I don't, uh, I don't, I haven't did the financials at, at all. The idea is you can see there is um, real stress on this company. Uh, this is an abnormal uh, price shot. This is a waterfall, right? It kind of just goes off a cliff and, and shoots right down. So there is this, um, there's this big um, um, uh, price of uh, price event that's happening. Uh, for want of a better description, uh, it just eludes me at the moment. Um, so you want to see if there is any money that's been reallo reallocated from risk into safety. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. So that's the first thing that I think is worth um, pointing out. Uh, another thing that I think is worth pointing out is the um, ARK Innovation Fund. It, it had a terrific start to the year. Um, and uh, we had to take a look at it because we were looking at it on the way down. And it's simply not fair to ignore it on the way up. And you can see that um, I have put in here, this is a monthly chart for the ARK Innovation. I've put in a COPOC here. The COPOC um, is probably not quite the right indicator to use for the ARC innovation, um, although you can make the argument that you can use it bec as a, because ARC innovations effectively uh, can be used as an index. It's an ETF 
of technology and innovation. Um, if it is a, an index, uh, that, then it makes more sense that you'll apply, because the COPOX generally are applied to indexes. And um, you can see that um, uh, Kathy Wood's fund here has done remarkably well uh, for the start of the year. And uh, if we just add the, uh, let's add a three month. Okay. Uh, and you can see that it's it's taken out as three months. So the COPOX giving a really good um, a really good um, signal here. The correlation coefficient here is actually um, I haven't put in the real rate, but the correlation with the uh, the real rate is extremely extremely strong. Let me just put in the label here so we can actually see the value. And it's at close to 90%, at minus 88%. So as the real rate comes down, so uh, Cathie Wood's ARC Innovation Fund moves up. Now, if we do get to a point where there's a pivot, and if we do get to a point where there is actually a rate cut, uh, this is definitely uh, something to keep an eye on, um, at, uh, at the very least um, as an index. So you can see we've got two very different stories that are... Um, uh, playing the market at the moment or, or, or evo um, taking place in the market when is this really sharp decline by um, a, a Adani group it, 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 it is off its lows but there is a serious risk of contagion and um, you know the the debt um, the debt um, market is watching it very carefully if you're a lender you must be very concerned um, and then uh, the second story is more positive, where you can see that the ARC Innovation Fund is actually starting to um, to show its uh, you know its strengths again, and that's not surprising because Nasdaq has had a really good run, and we've been following Nasdaq very carefully. Um, it's been one of the uh, main focuses for 2023 in our morning market review. We've looked at it a, a fair few times, and um, I've traded it a fair few times. And it's really um, something uh, that I'm keen to keep on look to keep looking at, simply because of its sensitivity to interest rates. And the interest rates um, are still the primary story at the moment. They're still, the, in my in my opinion, the key driver. Um, overnight, what happened with um, earnings um, coming out of the out of the um, Fang stocks signs. Netflix, because Netflix has really good results, but they resol they released um, uh, last week um, or the week before. I can't quite remember, but uh, we had uh, Meta overnight. We had um, uh, Apple. Um, the, the the results weren't very good coming from the um, from the companies. Uh, so there's a few things that um, to say about that. Uh, the first is I want to look at it on a technical basis. Then we'll look at it on a fundamental basis. So. Let's uh, bring up Microsoft Paint. And um, this is where um, it really gets um, interesting to me. Uh, a bull market um, evolves in three stages and a bear market evolves in three stages. Where do I get that from? That is a Dow theory, okay? So it's it's been around for over a century and it's really held, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's past the test of time, so to speak. And we've kind of got the, uh, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, cancel that. Um, we've got sort of a stage like that, a stage like that. This is the bull market and a stage like that. Okay. And uh, what we would call the first stage is something which is called uh renewed confidence or reviving confidence and i believe this is the stage we're in now uh subject to correction okay so we really only know after the fact but um, i think we're at the renewed confidence stage uh the second stage look very carefully what the second stage is uh, improved earnings and then you've got the uh the rampant speculation stage okay uh, we won't go through the bear market stages um, today. 
All right, so we've got, uh, these are the stages. Now, the thing about renewed confidence is that it's a different stage to improved earnings. So we have the weak earnings, and I would acknowledge that, but we're at the incorrect stage for improved earnings. We're at the renewed confidence stage. The improved earnings is what we're discounting. That's what we're looking for, but we're not seeing it yet. Okay, what renewed confidence is, renewed confidence is where you start getting a renewed confidence based on the business cycle. What's the business cycle based on? It's based on uh, interest rates. Okay, so we still, to me, the, the pivot here is part one of the part one, the improved earnings. That's definitely a key component, but we may not see it, but it's all about forward guidance. It's so all about the Ford Gardens. Uh, they've already started, when I say they, the companies have already started cost controls. Unfortunately, it's via um, the jobs market, but that's always where the price, that's always where the price is going to adjust. It's going to adjust in the jobs market. All right, uh, let's just take a look at the fundamentals. And the fundamentals, again, is just simply present value equals, now look at this, Future value. That's that's when we're looking when we're talking about future value, we're talking we're looking towards improved earnings. We're not we're looking into the future and then we're discounting it back. And what are we discounting it back? By the interest rate. Okay. So we still look towards the future, even though the, the earnings we get now is the past. Though that those earnings are from a recession. That recession was priced in last year. We were in a bear market last year. The Ford, the, the markets look forward six to nine months. Okay. That's what, so that's the way the market's playing it out. We 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 we're looking forward. We to me very much in a renewed confidence where we're ignoring bad news. That's a that's a classic uh sign that we're in renewed confidence. All right, I'm just cognizant of time. We've got four minutes left. Let's have a quick look at the um, main layout. Uh, here is DAX. And uh, this is actually moving sideways and up. So we're going to move this higher peak over there. This higher trough hasn't come, this higher trough hasn't come into play yet. So we're going to have to carry on watching this. And in fact, let's take this out and extend this like that. All right, if you take a look at the daily chart here, we are in zone one. Take a look at the squeeze here. Something's gonna happen, there's a squeeze. Now, we don't have an idea of which way the expansion is gonna go. Is it gonna go up, is it gonna go down? Well, as long as we stay in zone one, the expansion should be up. We're in zone one, there's a little bit of red. I would be looking to see if the central pivot or the uh, S1 level holds. I'll be looking at support where the, where the support's going to hold, then I'll be looking for our signals. So it's kind of a um, a waiting game now as we watch. But we've got the non-farm payrolls. So this is going to be probably on pause until non-farm payrolls. We'll go through to Euro, and this is where we're going to uh, wrap up uh, today. So we'll trade the Euro. I've actually got a position on Euro at the moment, came down. Now, yesterday's press press conference was the biggest uh, co confusion. It was the most confusing affair I've ever heard. So the uh, the ECB basically said we're going to hike by 50 basis points. Then we're going to hike by 50 face basis points again come March. And then they said in the press conference, but uh, we're going to go meeting by meeting and we're going to be data dependent, meaning that, meaning that well, the 50 is, is that, Done or is it not done? I'm talking about the 15 March. I've never been more confused uh, listening to a, uh, a press conference, and the market didn't like that at all. They took that as dovish, and it was sold down. Uh, it was sold down heavily, and you can see that now the market um, is basically looking to potentially turn. So I've put on a little bit of a feeler uh, just to see if we can make uh, something over here, but. Um, uh, I think again, it's going to be mainly dependent on non-form, uh, non-form payroll. Um, yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. We, we're talking about the Adani Group. Yeah, that's exactly what we were referring to, Anna. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. And 
if you confused about it, uh, the 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 uh, market is as well. <laughs> so, uh, but the the risk there, and the risk there is contagion. So. One, one thing we can do is we can take a look at the US dollar. What's happening with the US dollar is the US dollar, see the US dollar's got bid this morning. Well, that must be off the, off the some of that must be because of Adani, the fear of contagion, okay? Uh, the other part of it is just the absolute confusion that came out of the uh, press conference yesterday at the ECB. All right, we've just hit the top of the hour, so I'm gonna conclude here. Join me at, um, 10 minutes before, which would be uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're asking for the stochastic settings, it's 1555. Okay. Mateus, I think that's what you, yeah, so we're at 320 ZA, which would be 120 UK. Let's catch up then, and we will do the uh, live trade. Matei, send me an email if I haven't answered your question, but it's a stochastic, slow stochastic 1555. All right, guys, let us wrap up here. I will speak to you all a bit later in the day.